Recording in progress. Established a quorum, so we're going to go ahead and start the meeting. Bonnie, would you mind calling the roll? Councilmember Newsom? Present. Brown? Here. Watkins? Here. Um, Bruner? Present. Councilmember Kalantari Johnson is absent. Vice Mayor Goldberg? Here. And Mayor Keeley is currently absent. Thank you. We only have one item on the agenda this evening, and this is a special meeting um, regarding segment eight and nine of the Coastal Rail Trail, a 2.2 mile bicycle pedestrian corridor system um, along the rail trail. And I just want to just give one brief announcement that Council Member Kalandari Johnson got invited by the Bidens, and she's not here today. She's celebrating Nauru's Persian New Year in Washington, D.C. today. So I'm just really happy for her, and thank you for going out there to represent all the um, Persian um, Californians that are here um, in the state. So that's really cool. And then we'll just go ahead and get started with the um, staff presentation. And thank you. Good evening, uh, Mayor, members of the City Council. My name is Tim Mayer, Senior Planner with the City. This evening's agenda item is a review of the Coastal Rail Trail Segments 8 and 9 project. The Coastal Rail Trail Segments 8 and 9 project is one component of a years-long, multi-jurisdictional, collaborative effort in formation of the Monterey Bay Sanctuary Scenic Trail, or MBSST. Uh, once complete, the Monterey Bay Sanctuary Scenic Trail will comprise a 50-mile-long multi-use trail extending from southern San Mateo County in the north to northern Monterey County in the south, generally paralleling State Highway 1 and the Pacific Coast. The portion of the Sanctuary Scenic Trail within Santa Cruz County is a 32-mile-long coastal rail trail, which is a continuous and separated bicycle-pedestrian path spanning the length of the county coastline. Development of the trail network, including the Coastal Rail Trail, is guided by the Monterey Bay Sanctuary Scenic Trail master, Network Master Plan, which divides the rail trail into 20 segments with logical beginning and ending points with each constructed upon availability of funding. Segments seven and eight and a portion of segment nine are located within the limits of the city of Santa Cruz. The rail trail corridor is owned by the Santa Cruz County Regional Transportation Commission or RTC and remains designated as an active railway. Uh, the image to the right hand side of this screen illustrates the path of the coastal rail trail in blue with segments eight and nine depicted in bright green. The project requires approval of several permits, including a design permit, slope modification permit, slope variance, and watercourse variance. Besides the entitlements under review this evening, a coastal development permit is required for review of construction within the coastal zone, including removal of existing trees. The rail trail corridor overlaps land across the harbor, which is a, with excuse me, which is within the original permit jurisdiction of the California Coastal Commission, and a coastal development permit application must therefore be submitted for review and approval for the project uh, by the Coastal Commission. For the sake of efficiency, the city will coordinate with the county to submit a single consolidated coastal permit application directly to the California Coastal Commission. Although the council has not requested this evening to take action directly on any permit related to tree removal, <laughs> Associated impacts have been analyzed as part of the environmental impact report prepared for the project, and a number of mitigation measures are incorporated as project conditions of approval, which would reduce to the extent possible the impacts associated with proposed removal of existing trees. Opportunities for future public comment related to tree removal will be provided through the Coastal Commission's review of the Coastal Development Permit. Also of note, the city has received full funding of the project as currently recommended. This slide shows the path of rail trail segments eight and nine. Segment eight, shown in orange, originates at the wharf roundabout located at the intersection of Pacific Avenue and Beach Street and runs six tenths of a mile along Beach Street, ending at the west side of the San Lorenzo River Trestle Bridge. Segment nine, illustrated here in blue green, spans a distance of 1.6 miles, continuing from the east side of the Trestle Bridge to 17th Avenue, mostly along Murray Street. The portion of segment eight that continues along the San Lorenzo River 
um, trestle bridge was completed in 2019. All of segment eight and a portion of segment nine are situated within the limits of the city of Santa Cruz. The part of segment nine east of the Harbor Bridge occurs entirely outside of city limits and within the jurisdiction of the county of Santa Cruz in which the city holds no regulatory authority. Two possible project strategies or approaches have been considered for development of the proposed project. The ultimate trail configuration is the approach recommended by staff and would include in segment eight improvement of the existing bikeway and sidewalk, and in segment nine, construction of a new multi-use trail positioned on the inland side of the existing railroad tracks, which were later switched to the coastal side of the tracks near El Dorado Avenue in the county's jurisdiction. An optional three-part phased approach has been considered for development of segment nine and evaluated at an equal level of detail for environmental impact as the ultimate trail configuration has. In the first phase or part one of that phased approach, all or a portion of the trail in segment nine will be constructed in approximately the same location as the railroad tracks through removal of the existing rails and ties. In the second phase, part two, the interim trail would be removed and the rail reconstructed. And in the third phase, part three, the ultimate trail configuration would be constructed with a new trail position parallel to the rail line as in the ultimate trail configuration, which again, is a preferred and recommended approach. As mentioned previously, the city has received $36 million for construction of the ultimate trail configuration, and the project is therefore fully funded for development of that ultimate trail configuration, the recommended and preferred approach. This slide illustrates improvements proposed for segment eight, that the existing bicycle and pedestrian infrastructure would be replaced and improved for enhanced safety and ease of circulation. New bicycle lanes painted green would be included and minor improvements incorporated, such as the pedestrian shelter photo opportunity island, illustrated here in the foreground of this slide. Improvements in segment eight would be the same for both the ultimate trail configuration or trail next to rail approach, as well as the optional interim trail or three-part phased approach. This slide shows a section of the preferred and recommended approach called the trail next to rail line or ultimate trail configuration proposed for segment nine. The recommended approach would include construction of a new 12-foot wide multi-use trail positioned adjacent to the existing rail line that would be retained. This slide shows for segment nine a cross-section of the optional first phase of the three-part phased approach called the optional interim trail. As mentioned, the first part of the phased approach would include removal of the, of the existing rail line, which is considered an historic resource for the purpose of project review under CEQA due its due to its potential for listing as an historic resource. In the first part, the existing tracks and trails would be, ties, excuse me, tracks and ties would be removed, and a 16-foot wide multi-use interim trail would be installed on the center line of the existing railroad tracks as shown on this slide. In part two, not shown on this slide, but which would follow part one, the trail would be removed and the rail line would be rebuilt in its former location. In part three, a 12 foot wide trail will be constructed parallel to the rebuilt rail line. The optional interim uh, trail approach would involve three separate periods of construction with an unknown period of time between each part or phase. This approach would also require more extensive tree removal as an eight foot wide trail and six inch wide curb will be built on both sides of the rail center line. The project would involve construction of various infrastructure, including retaining walls, waterway crossings, improvements to the existing roadway, installation of fencing, guardrails, and lighting, new trash receptacles, bicycle parking, and benches and signage. This slide shows a clear span prefabricated bridge as currently proposed for Pilkington Creek. This slide illustrates the proposed design of the ultimate trail configuration, again, in which the trail would be switched from the inland side the coastal side, traversing the train tracks near El Dorado Avenue to provide access to Simpkins Swim Center within the county's jurisdiction. Extensive public outreach has been conducted as required by the California Environmental Quality Act, or CEQA, and is consistent with the city's public outreach policy. Dates of notable community engagement and public outreach events are shown here. The city determined early that an environmental impact report would be required for the proposed project. An EIR provides for a robust analysis and public review process, including consideration of project alternatives, 
identification of mitigation measures while providing maximum legal defensibility. At this point, I'd like to hand the presentation over to Kate Elliott, who's the lead consultant with Harrison Associates, who prepared the environmental impact report for the proposed project. Good evening. Uh, as mentioned, I'm Kate uh, with the Harrison Associates, and the Harris team prepared the EIR. The team also includes staff from Ecosystems West for the biological resources analysis, and from Rincon Consulting for cultural resources and aesthetics analysis, and some of the other topics as well. We have a very high-level overview of, of the EIR findings in terms of the significant impacts. Most of the potential impacts that were identified in the draft EIR were determined to be less than significant or were reduced to a less than significant level with mitigation measures. However, the proposed project with or without the optional interim tr um, trail would result in significant and unavoidable impacts to aesthetics and biological resources as a result of substantial tree removal. For aesthetics, the tree removal would degrade local views of scenic resources, which are the, uh, the dense vegetation and trees located along the rail alignment. For biological resources, the tree removal would interfere with local wildlife movement along the corridor by removing uh, cover and foraging habitat as they make their way from between different open spaces such as Arana Gulch and, and Lake State Beach. Um, additionally, tree removal could affect um, monarch butterfly habitat by removing trees that provide a wind buffer currently from the ocean breezes, uh, protecting uh, roosting sites that are a little bit further inland. Trail design was modified um, to the extent feasible to minimize tree removal at these locations. For example, on both sides of the harbor, um, the trail was redesigned to be a viaduct, which is a, a trail supported by pilings at different intervals, instead of an at-grade trail, which re would have required retaining walls, which would have taken out more trees. Um, the trees would be replaced at ratios and locations determined in coordination with the regulatory agencies. Um, but it's still considered a significant and unavoidable impact in the EIR because uh, the exact location is uncertain at this time and because of the length of time it takes for trees, replacement trees to uh, reach maturity. Uh, for cultural resources, the optional interim trail results in an additional significant and unavoidable impact, which Tim had mentioned, uh, because it's removing the rail line, which was identified as a historic resource because of its eligibility for listing in both the state and federal registers of historic places. Um, it's for its association with the history of transportation and economic development in the uh, Santa Cruz area. And next slide. This slide compares the tree removal. Uh, the proposed project without the interim trail would remove 381 trees, including 117 in the city limits. The proposed project with the interim trail would remove 404 trees, 124 during part one, and then later another 280 to implement the ultimate trail configuration. Next slide. So the um, proposed project without the optional interim trail or, or the ultimate trail configuration was identified as environmentally superior because it would result in less tree removal overall, there would be no significant and unavoidable impact to historic resources, and there would be one construction period instead of three which would reduce construction-related impacts associated with earth movement and emissions. Next slide. So the draft EIR was circulated for a 53-day public review period. The city received 92 comment letters and emails, which consisted of a total of 292 individual comments, which the city responded to in the responses document. Many of the comments concerned similar issues, uh, including those listed on this slide. And for these uh, responses, we developed master responses that are a little bit more robust and comprehensive and presented at the beginning of the responses document. So the final EIR that you uh, would be certifying consists of three volumes. Volume one are all the comments and responses to the comments. Volume two is the draft EIR. And volume three are the EIR appendices. With that, back to Tim. Thank you, Kate. So the benefits of the ultimate trail configuration approach are many, um, including improvement to aesthetics, um, as the project would facilitate public access to scenic vistas and views of the coast, uh, would enhance air quality and reduce greenhouse gas emissions by reducing vehicle miles traveled, would achieve city land use planning goals through improved connectivity across the city and among neighborhoods through better circulation and safety for motorists, pedestrians, and bicyclists, and would benefit 
uh, public safety and services by providing direct access to parks and recreation facilities for emergency response. This evening, the City Council is requested to make a decision regarding certification of the final EIR and adoption of findings of fact, as well as mitigation uh, monitoring and repro reporting program, and a statement of overriding considerations for the proposed project. An errata to the final EIR has been prepared to address minor inconsistencies and corrections subsequent to publication of the EIR. Um, please note that the City's Planning Commission previously reviewed the project and voted unanim unanimously to authorize all entitlements. Within its authority, the City Council has called up a review of the project as a de novo hearing decision this evening. Staff have made the required findings and recommended the City Council take the following actions. Uh, number one, adopt a resolution certifying the environmental impact report attached to the resolution as Exhibit A of the staff report. Um, number two, adopt a resolution adopting the findings of fact under CEQA a mitigation monitoring and reporting program, or MMRP, and a statement of overriding considerations. And number three, adopt a resolution approving the design permit, slope modification permit, slope variance, and water course variance for the Coastal Rail Trail segments eight and nine project based on the findings listed um, in the staff report and the conditions of approval attached to that, and adopting the findings of fact in the California Environmental Quality Act, again, statement of overriding considerations and mitigation monitoring and reporting program or MMRP. Staff and the city's consulting team are all available to provide additional information to answer questions. Thank you very much for your time. This concludes staff's presentation. Well, thank you very much. Uh, I also want to apologize for being a few minutes late. I've, you'll never guess in a million years got caught in traffic. <laughs> uh, I want to thank the vice mayor for beginning the meeting in a timely fashion. Thank you for your staff presentation. Let me see if there are questions from members of the council. Just a minute, no. Uh, I have a question. I'm sorry, did you? Uh, a question. I, over the years, have uh, not in this position, but in previous positions, been. I, have, I, I take the concept of adopting resolutions uh, of overriding considerations very seriously, because I do think it's the part of CEQA that not only has evaluated the environmental impacts, really worked at finding mitigation measures to mitigate significant findings to insignificance, and that when not being able to do that, we should do it very rarely and only under extraordinary circumstances as I see it. That may not be the view that everyone has, the view that I have. I want you to talk a little bit about what it is we can't overcome that we need to make this finding. Certainly, Mayor. I can um, go ahead and present the slide uh, that I think speaks best to it. Take your word for it. You oh. don't need to do slides. So, yeah, there's um, the significant and unavoidable impacts, as Kate had mentioned, are to aesthetics, visual resources due to the uh, impacts to scenic vistas associated with tree removal. Um, also, biological resources uh, largely associated with removal of existing trees and the impacts to wildlife habitat and the cultural resources, but that would be for the optional interim trail only. So. Really, it's two, two categories of significant and unavoidable impacts associated with the project as proposed. In that regard, because I don't think I necessarily disagree with that, where is there a point in an evaluation? Take any one of the three that you wanted to just, th that you just mentioned in response to my previous question. Where is it that it tips over for you? Well, the, really, the um, under CEQA, it's the threshold uh, for significance. If uh, the impacts associated with a category of impacts um, exceeds the level of significance uh, threshold, then it's deemed a significant impact. And if it can't be mitigated with uh, measurements or measures, excuse me, mitigation measures, then that impact or series of impacts, category of impacts, remains a significant and unavoidable impact. So to the extent possible, mitigation measures were incorporated 
to <coughs> reduce uh, impacts to a level less than significant. However, um, those categories, as I mentioned earlier, remain significant and unavoidable despite the city's um, best efforts at mitigation measures. This body last week and this week has been dealing with trees as a component part of issues that we are that are in front of us. With regard to the trees, uh, what has what is being done in the design of this and the mitigation of the loss of trees? Sure, Mayor Keeley. Um, so in response to that question, the mitigation measures require a one-to-one -one re uh, replacement for all existing trees proposed to be removed. However, um, the city's LCP does uh, have a goal um, stating that a two-to-one replacement ratio be enacted. So um, that two-to-one replacement ratio is expected to be the actual replacement ratio minimally that will be included um, to lessen the impact of tree removal. So meaning for every tree removed, at least two trees are expected to be planted to uh, replace those lost. Much the same as we discussed last week in a different context, time to maturity, time to what is it you're planting versus what you're taking out. Not, not you, excuse me, the project is uh, replanting versus those that are coming out. Right, um, so if I understood the question, um, Maybe or the is the time to maturity considered yes, as sir. part of this. Yes. Uh, right. So um, that you know is an inherent component with tree replacement. Obviously, trees take some t time to mature. So um, ordinarily, a minimum tree size would have to be um, uh, required as part of the project. So oftentimes, it's a minimally a 24-inch box size. <laughs> which um, is a small tree, but uh, depending on the, the species, can grow pretty quickly to maturity. And uh, given um, uh, habitat, you know, typically tree replacement occurs in relatively open habitat, so trees tend to go relatively quickly and uh, with proper care and proper environment, all those factors can um, uh, reach uh, maturity, you know, um, at Thank you. their potential. Thank you. You may have something to add to that. Is that correct? Can I just sort of elaborate well, real quick? Yeah, so the mitigation is, is, uh, does involve tree replacement and ratios, but it's, it's much more comprehensive than that. And if you'd like to hear a little bit more about some of the other mitigation, or in particular, um, one of the mitigation measures, in particular is mitigation measure Bio 9 b which offers this comprehensive program that deals not just with tree replacement, but a lot of the other factors that go into providing replacement habitat. So I would defer to the biologists to elaborate a little bit. Well, actually, I'm interested in the trees. So that's that's okay. the part I'm interested in. Thank you. Th you it doesn't mean I'm uninterested in the rest. I think the rest is being done quite <laughs> well. And this is, I suspect, being done quite well, but I want to get to the bottom. And again, this isn't a random question. It's how to make a finding of overriding significance, which I think we ought not to do all the time, simply because it's an available option. It should be the last option, seems to me. Uh, but you have been quite helpful with regard, seriously, you've been quite helpful with this. Let me see if other members have questions or comments before we go to the public. Seeing and hearing none, I would invite you to come forward and provide testimony. Ms. Bush, I'm going to guess we have some folks online. We do. We're going up, yes. How about we alternate back and forth? We'll hear someone here in the public first, and then we'll go online. We'll go back to someone here present and then back online. And everyone will have two minutes on this. Good evening. Good evening. My name is Grace. Nice to meet you all. First, let me applaud your work on the rail trail in Santa Cruz. No doubt this trail will benefit the community and the environment. Each segment presents its own challenges. In segment nine, 
the near total devastation of the eucalyptus grove required by the ultimate trail design is unfathomable to me. Its absence will invite the pollution, noise, wind, and visual clutter from Murray Street and the beach boardwalk into my neighborhood, not to mention the people. Most of the destruction can be avoided with little additional cost by building the interim trail design as the final design. This alternate design leaves the trail where the tracks are and requires the removal of far fewer trees. I think we saw the numbers as 381 versus 124. I invite you to end this meeting 30 minutes early and walk the segment nine, thank you, walk segment nine from the beach boardwalk along the rail track through the beautiful eucalyptus trees, smelling their fragrance, listening to the birds, watching the leaves flutter, and imagine it all gone. I inv invite you to walk up the steps of Hiawatha Avenue and imagine now a 12 foot wide walkway adjacent to it in place of the eucalyptus grove. Imagine you live there on Hiawatha. Imagine you live on the 100 blocks of Mountain View or Cayuga. If it doesn't break your heart, I fear for humanity. I fear it would mean that those people we've trusted to better our community could disregard some of the people they serve for expedience, for convenience, for something that may or may not be a problem 25 years from now, I actually don't know why anyone would consider approving the ultimate trail design. Um, please walk the segment. Thank you. Thank you so much. Ms. Bush, let's go to our first person online. Can you hear me? Good evening. Uh, good evening, Mayor Kelly, Vice Mayor Golder, and Council members. My name is Rob Tidmore, and I work for the County of Santa Cruz as the project manager for the county's various coastal rail trail projects, including the portion of Segment 9 that lies within the county's jurisdiction. I'm here tonight to emphasize the years-long multi-agency support and collaborative effort that is behind this project. As you know, and as Tim presented, the city is the lead agency for Segment 8 and 9, but roughly half of the trail length from the east side of the harbor to 17th Avenue is within the county's jurisdiction. <coughs> the county has been partnering with the city and the RTC to deliver this landmark project for the past three plus years. We have collaborated closely on the design, engineering, and alignment, including design solutions, some of which Tim mentioned, to lessen environmental County staff have supported the public engagement process, attended meetings, and answered questions. Most recently, we assisted in the development of the environmental review documents, and the county even contributed $1.5 million in County Measure D funds as a grant match for the recently awarded $35.8 million ATP grant that will fund construction of the Segments 8 and 9 project. County and city staff, in collaboration with the RTC, have worked closely together to bring the project to this important milestone. The county is supportive of this project and is committed to continue to partner with the city through its completion. I respectfully urge your support of the staff recommendations and thank you for your time. Thank you very much for calling in. Good evening, sir. Good evening, council. My name is David. Um, I am the founder of Friends of the Rail Bikes. Our acronym is FORB. Um, so, aren't two choices here tonight there are three choices you can give me a million dollars I'll create a thousand rail bikes and we can use the exact or the existing infrastructure to get people moving today this is a near-term solution it is cost effective this will cost one thousandth of the total cost of the rail trail project that's projected and that's before cost overruns we know all these things go over budget they utilize low center of gravity technology to stabilize the right, rider on a single, single rail, allowing bi-directional travel, something that could never be achieved with a train. The rear wheels allow for travel off rails, getting riders to the last mile to their destination. Did I mention they're environmentally friendly? 
Rail bikes meet the transportation needs of Santa Cruz residents while appeasing the demands of rail preservationists who would prefer to see nothing done with the rail corridor in our lifetime. For $1 million, we can make this happen. Everyone in attendance today now understands that a false choice between two financially unrealistic projects means that we actually get neither. Rail bikes are a clear path forward and we demand a, to have a seat at the table. Thank you. Thank you very much. Ms. Bush, someone online. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, good evening. Thank you, Mayor Keeley, council members and staff. My name is Saladin Sale. I'm a Santa Cruz City resident who will strongly support the rail trail project. I urge you to move forward with segments eight and nine in the ultimate trail configuration as soon as possible. I'd like to use the remainder of my time to share with you the words of Capitola resident Jim Weller, published this morning as a letter to the editor in the Santa Cruz Sentinel. And I quote, a few diehards can't take no for an answer. Even after 73% of us voted no way Greenway last June in an electoral shout loud enough to knock a crow off a fence post at a thousand yards, Still kicking, in a guest commentary March 17, four heedless flats calling themselves a Greenway Committee, whose cause is about as popular as a skunk in the parlor, seemingly have nothing better to do than to regurgitate the same failed propaganda they wasted more than a half million dollars on last year. The planned rail trail is being built beside the rails, not in place of them and nothing the resentful Greenway losers say or do is going to stop it. No matter how much these tiresome kvetchers protest, the Santa Cruz Branch Railroad will stay in place and public rail transit will proceed in the orderly manner already well underway. Jim Weller, Capitola. Thank you, Jim, and thank you, council members. Thank you so much. Good evening. My name is Brian Peoples with Trail Now. We're advocate organization for the trail. Um, I have the sign that says uh, not allowable. And the reason is the ultimate trail essentially is not allowable. The Coastal Commission has already declined the ultimate trail on the north coast. Um, they actually refused the permit for the retaining wall, and it's called a temporary retaining wall. And as you know, that project has been delayed for years. And it continues to get delayed because of the cost. So there is, if we go down the entire corridor, down to Aptos, La Selva, it's 20 feet from the ocean. There are no plans for the ultimate trail being implemented down there. The RTC is looking at going forward with the initial uh, interim trail because they know they can implement. The property right, the easements, in many sections, the, the village particularly, specifically doesn't allow for a passenger train and the trail, okay? So it's only freight. So there's a lot of barriers, and that's what you're seeing. And so if you go and you try to implement the ultimate trail, you'll never get the trail, and that's what happened on the North Coast. We don't have a trail on the North Coast. We built 1.2 miles over 10 years, and it costs more to build that 12-foot trail than it is to widen Highway 1. You're cutting down twice as many trees for your trail than Highway 1. Does this make sense? People, the RTC staff has said the interim trail is factually the process of preserving the corridor for transit. Please approve segment 8, move forward with that, and go with option 2, the alternate trail for segment 9. It's the most cost-effective, most timely. It's actually going to be the fastest. We don't have the North Coast Trail. Thank you for your time. Thank you, sir. Ms. Bush, someone else online? Can you hear me? Good evening. Good evening. Um, thank you for taking my comments. My name is Johanna Lighthill, and I'm a county resident. 
I submitted a letter earlier, but I think I was a little late. So I'm gonna read off a few of the um, topics that I have. Um, today, in addition to the significant and unavoidable environmental impacts due to the tree removal, I hope that you will consider how or if the segment nine proposed project would serve our community. Will your council tonight approve a trail design that for most of its length meets the absolute minimum width requirements established by Caltrans? Near the El Dorado section, the uh, trail is less than the, the minimum. It does not meet the minimum requirements. Um, something that's kind of been bugging me is the trail designation. Everyone calls this a 12 foot trail. Using Caltrans standards, Caltrans would uh, designate it as an eight foot trail because all trails require shoulders and this has two, two foot shoulders. So um, there are no mitigations for a narrow trail. You can't make it wider unless you get more room and the corridor is certainly limited. Um, will you design a trail that scores an F rating using that eight foot trail um, path width? It's, it scores an eight, use eight, excuse me, it scores an F rating using the Department of Transportation shared use path level of service calculator. Um, will you uh, approve a trail that proposes to build the trail within the freight easement that is currently owned by a rail operator? Uh, the trail includes fencing and rail crossings that are not yet approved by the California Public Utilities Commission. The trail may, may hinder access by emergency responders because 20% of the trail is 10 feet or less and often on viaducts or bridges that will limit access. So you guys are in a tough spot. I understand because constituents have been told for years that both rail and trail fit in the corridor, but now we're able to see what, what's possible. So thank you for your time. Thank you very much for your time. Good evening. Good evening, Mayor Council, Tim Bratton. I'm a resident of Santa Cruz. And, um, you know, I, I wish there were a, a way that we could do this um, environmentally. And, you know, we have, we have two options. One's environmental devastation, not really part of our DNA in this, uh, what I think of Santa Cruz. And the other is, um, is you know, something that preserves the corridor. Section nine, if you've walked it, I'm assuming everybody here has walked it, yes? Everybody's walked it, okay, cool. So you're in there and you're thinking, you know, how quiet and beautiful and you hear all the, uh, you know, wildlife and you're looking at these trees and you're thinking 400 trees, how, where, you know, or whatever it is, three, and you're wondering, what, you know, so in the summer you've got concrete, you've got, um, trail that that attracts heat. You've you've cut, you've decimated all the trees that provide the shade and the and the uh, flood uh, mitigation during uh, the storms we've had, and and in place of that, we're putting in something that is like is that what is going to attract people? Will you feel good about your vote to approve that as a as part of what Santa Cruz? like is, I just can't understand how you could approve this ultimate plan and think that, look, that's really the best we can do. Um, if you look at section seven quickly and uh, and you see what they've done, they bulldozed, have you walked section seven? Okay, so the trees are gone from the view. You can see the whole water treatment plant now. There's no filtering of the smell uh, into the west side or when the wind, wind's wrong. You know, the other things that we don't realize are gonna happen when we do this are just devastating. And for those of us who care a lot, we wanna have something that we're proud of. So please support um, the first phase of nine. Wait for the train. If it ever comes, wait to do anything in there. Just leave it rather than do what you're doing uh, in the ultimate plan. Thank you. Thank you very much. Online, Ms. Bush. Hello, Ms. can you hear me? Good evening, Hello? Ms. Brocklebank. Hi, um, there's two people using this computer. There's myself, and then, um, then there's a second person using the computer, Michael Lewis. I'll start by saying, uh, let's get on with segment eight. Everybody's for segment eight. My purpose tonight is say, let's hold off. 
on segment nine, because as the ARR tells us, the project would have an adverse effect on scenic resources and vistas through removal of mature trees. It would be inconsistent with policies that pertain to tree and vegetation removal. It could adversely affect monarch butterfly and autumnal or wintering roost sites. The project would interfere with wildlife movement, um, cumulative impacts, significant cumulative. These are not my words. These are what city planners incorporated into this document. On top of that, I'm so glad you asked about overriding statement of overriding considerations because A through F gave all the reasons why these benefits are okay um, and rationalize destroying and taking uh, out trees because of the benefits. And yet every one of those seven benefits are also available by in the optional first phase interim trail and interim trail that would do all of the above. It would provide all of the above benefits but it would do it without deforesting the corridor. It would do it without removing wildlife habitat in the vegetative understory, without interfering with wildlife movement, without building retaining walls and bridges over streams. And so overriding considerations, not good enough. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. No. My name is JT, it's nice to see you all again. Um, it's come to my attention that the rail trail permits for segments eight and nine are being appealed with the overwhelming amount of no's on measure D in our June election, 56,342 votes to be exact, nearly 74% of the total and the RTC now moving forward by hiring contractors to study locations for stops, passing loops and so forth for electric passenger rail on our branch line, I am confident the city council will approve of the ultimate rail trail segments eight and nine. Santa Cruz was just awarded more than $100 million to fund the future segments for our rail trail expansion. An amount of money so unfathomably large, uh, we would be silly not to start building tomorrow instead of holding up construction permits, costing us time and money that can be spent building. For those unaware, Watsonville is currently in talks to construct a Caltrain layover facility. This would connect Santa Cruz County with the Bay Area, reducing congestion on Highway 17 and Highway 1. Realistically, commuters by car on Highway 17 will not instead choose to bike 30 miles to Watsonville in the early morning to catch the train to the Bay Area job. Electric passenger rail on our branch line will allow commuters to quickly connect to Caltrain in Watsonville and service the entire county with zero emission, right of way, high capacity transit. Choosing to instead replace our rails with the trail means Santa Cruz will be completely disconnected with the entire state of California, making our county only accessible by the automobile, the very object that is causing more than half of all emissions in Santa Cruz, reducing public space for residents and congests our ever so densifying city. All of this opportunity, future funding, county connectivity, and reduction of Highway 17 and local single occupancy car use will open Santa Cruz to opportunities never seen before. And as we just heard, the interim option will remove more trees than the ultimate option. If public commenters in this room are here in support of saving eucalyptus trees and creating a clean air future, they would and should fully support the ultimate option. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Ms. Bush online. And that would be Isaiah. Good evening, Isaiah. Can you hear me? Yes. Great, uh, my name is Isaiah Burke. Uh, I am a four-year resident uh, student at UC Santa Cruz. Um, I, I agree full-heartedly with the previous commenter. Um, I believe that if you were to approve only the interim trail, it would be betrayal of the voters who spoke overwhelmingly in defeating measure, in defeating the Greenway measure. Um, I just wanted to speak as a perspective as a cyclist. I don't own a car, um, like many UC Santa Cruz students. And I commute um, to work at Shadowbrook from near the campus. That's a five mile ride throughout the entire um, city and, and into neighboring cities. And every single day I risk my life uh, being near cars, um, dealing with sharrows and bike gutters. And um, studies have shown that the number one hurdle to uh, mass adoption of cycling is safe, uh, protected bicycle infrastructure. Um, 
this project needs to go forward immediately. It also needs to be ultimate. It, it, it needs to include the ultimate option. Um, uh, Santa Cruz Transit is woefully underdeveloped. And uh, if, uh, if we're looking towards the future, we need to be able to connect to the rest of the state with uh, high capacity uh, rail. Um, yeah, uh, I urge you to uh, expedite this project and accept the ultimate trail for the safety of the community and um, for the environment. Thank you, I yield my time. Thank you, Mr. Burke. Good evening. No matter what else you say, great jacket. <laughs> I'm not sure why we're really even discussing this now. The, count, the voters of the city and the county have spoken. We're here to give birth to the future. And the future is not cars. We are killing ourselves with emissions. We need public transit now. People who don't who are unable to drive. I lost my son this weekend, he couldn't drive. He needed a way to get to and from. He didn't die on a bike, but a lot of people have. We know what's gonna be faster. The ultimate trail will be faster. We don't have to go back for permits. Every delay in this trail is gonna be measured in the blood of cyclists. We need to get people out of their cars today. We need to give birth to the future right now. Now we got a bunch of hucksters. I feel like I'm listening to the Simpsons monorail episode here. Yeah, we got this crazy in South Park's Mr. Garrison's car. Great ideas, but we've got a plan. Let's stick to the plan. Let's do what we know will work. Get people out of their cars. We, you know, imagine, you may know me, I'm the rickshaw guy. I serve the people of this city. I want to help people get around. I want to keep people safe. This trail, the ultimate trail, will keep people safe. It'll keep drunk people off the roads. It'll help me serve the public. And someday, we can beat this traffic problem that we have down at the beach because 40% of my receipts, my credit card receipts, are from people who are from counties to the south. Those people can just get on a train. They can come into Santa Cruz. They can bring their umbrellas on the train, or they can rent them here. But they can enjoy the city without bringing their cars. And to start. We've got to start. I know we don't want to lose the trees, but guess what? We've got a bigger problem. We've got a horrendous environmental problem crashing down on us. And yeah, we can replace the trees, but we need, we need to move now as quickly as we can for people like my son who can't drive. Thank you, sir. Ms. Bush, another person online. That would be Ms. Mio. Good evening. Good evening. And thank you very much for, <laughs> sorry, just a sec. <laughs> thank you very much for calling this meeting. The FER suggests that you as the crucial decision maker will be able to decide which one of the presented design options fastest informed decision making for an environmental superior trail based on meaningful evaluation of the trail options, environmental impacts in the proposed project of objectives, including alternative two. Today, uh, UN released the climate report that makes a strong case for an environment and carbon reduction partnership. Since trees sequester carbon, produce oxygen, and the trail reduces greenhouse emission. The report also states that land use has to reduce conversion of natural ecosystem and increase ecosystem restoration, afforestation and restoration. It stands to reason that Santa Cruz is willing to collaborate in this global science-based effort with the 12-foot interim trail built over the tracks because it saves 257 trees, fulfills the project's objectives, plus saves money, time, and avoids people's immediate experience of enduring health and heat impacts from the loss of trees in the hope for a passenger train 
that is 20 to 30 years down the line. And by the way, the majority of the EIR comments supports this. What is not clear to me is upon certification of the impact report, at what point the city council exercised their evaluation ability to decide about the optional alternative interim trail. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Meal. Mr. Farrell, good evening. Good evening, Mayor Ke Keeley and city council members. My name is Matt Farrell. I'm here speaking today as the board chair of Friends of the Rail and Trail. And I want to speak in support of the stack recommendation, to certify the final EIR, for council to certify the final EIR and take the measures necessary to move forward with this project. It's my understanding that council received over 200 letters from supporters of Ford encouraging you to support the staff recommendation. And I'm here to represent them. This is a project loved by many in the community and Fort's been working for over 20 years to see it come forward. So we encourage you to implement the recommendations included in the staff recommendation and move forward with this project. It would make a huge difference in our community. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Farrell. Ms. Bush. Anna online, good evening. Hello, good evening. Thank you very much for giving me an opportunity to speak. Um, I just wanted to call in in support of the staff's recommendations for the ultimate trail plan. I am born and raised in Santa Cruz County, um, and I used to live in Capitola and worked in Santa Cruz and did my best to bike as many days as I could. Um, mostly because the traffic on Highway 1 was so terrible that it was an awful way to end my day uh, sitting in traffic at home. But due to feelings of not being safe, um, it, was, it became pretty impossible for me to bike on a consistent basis. And obviously in weather like we've had recently, that would not be conducive to biking. <laughs> and I know many people who either due to physical ability or time, um, or it finances in terms of being able to afford a bicycle could not have done that. So uh, I actually ultimately ended up moving to Santa Cruz to be near my work, which is definitely more expensive. And I think um, considering how the interim trail leaves behind those in our community who can maybe not afford to sit in traffic and can't afford to bike instead of drive or live near their vehicle, uh, we really need to be forward thinking and have public transportation that is, you know, the ultimate equalizer for those in our community. I really appreciate the staff's effort to mitigate tree loss, as I think they are a valuable resource in our county. But I think we can't limit ourselves to thinking about only the environmental impact of the next two to three years. And we have to think about what kind of county we want to shape for ourselves moving forward. Um, I really appreciate everybody's effort on this project and hope that the ultimate trail plan can go through. Thank you very much. Thank you for calling in, Anna. Good evening. Good evening. Hi, um, my name is Tina Andrietta and I support the ultimate trail because as staff described, it will have less environmental impacts impacts than the three-phase interim trail construction. Thank you for moving this project along. I will use it because um, I live along the corridor in Aptos. What really got me involved in this project years ago before I, before I sold my business, I lived on the west side and then also I had a business in Capitola. I had uh, two full-time employees who uh, lived, born in Watsonville they used to bemoan why they couldn't take a train to work. And I didn't give it any thought. It just kind of went over my head because I had the luxury when I lived on the west side driving against the traffic. And then I moved to Capitola and I lived two blocks from my business, which was close to Gail's Bakery. They would bemoan it. So that's how I kind of got involved with this. And the reason I support also the ultimate trail is that the interment trail removes more trees and I'm looking at children and the safety of children. No more delays. It's going to cost us more money if we delay. 
and also it's gonna cost lives. Let's get the trail built now, get our kids off the streets. That's really important to me. And 760, excuse me, 73% of the voters support the rail and trail. So let's just continue moving forward. Thank you. Thank you so much. Ms. Bush, our next person online. Mm. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, thank you, Mayor Keeley and honorable city council members. My name is Lonnie Faulkner. Equity Transit supports the staff recommendation for the city to approve the final environmental impact report for segments eight and nine of the Coastal Rail Trail Project. We support construction of the ultimate trail beside the rail. The majority of our community supports building a world-class trail that connects families in Watsonville in the south to our beautiful Katoni Coast Dairies National Monument in the north. We oppose alternative one, the 26 foot wide uh, trail proposed by Greenway as seen on their website. Alternative one would require rail banking and removal of the tracks, not likely to be approved by federal authorities. and goes directly against the almost 74% voting majority that opposed Greenway's proposal to rip out the tracks. Alternative one is the most destructive option requiring upheaval of the toxic rail bed for regrading far more cutting of trees and more than twice the asphalt compared to the ultimate trail. We oppose alternative two, the interim, in other words, a temporary trail on the tracks. A temporary trail requires we invest more money and more time, more than twice the materials, twice as much impact of the neighboring communities and wildlife due to two major construction periods at least, meaning more time people cannot use this trail. Over the duration of the project, even more trees, plants, and wildlife would be disturbed and destroyed. Building the ultimate trail from the get-go means we save money on and time and reduces construction periods and avoids further inflation. Moving forward with the ultimate trail gives community members the chance to walk and bike to school, work, and the many beautiful parks like Nassim Marks and Wilder, while ensuring that we can still move forward with zero emissions rail so we can be a part of the state rail network, which will connect us by rail to Monterey, San Jose, San Francisco, and, and beyond. Thank you very much for your time. And I do care about the trees, and I hope you will partner with Sierra Club and SC Can and other organizations to improve the remediation of the trees and get shade over the, tra uh, the trail and tracks. Thank you. Thank you for your testimony. Good evening. Ms. Arnold, how are you? Doing well, thank you. Um, so thank you very much, everyone, for giving us the opportunity to speak out on this important issue. Um, you know, we all love trees. Who doesn't love a tree? I mean, and they have important climate mitigation, you know, uh, powers. But we have to think that climate change is going to kill way more trees than this trail is going to. We can't just keep telling people to get out of their cars and not give them an actual useful alternative. Then we're just shaming people and we're not really changing anything. By building the ultimate trail, we can get more people out of, our car, out of their cars sooner, and then we can reduce our local greenhouse gas emissions more significantly, more quickly, therefore saving the environment for the remaining trees. The, I, I'd be very interested in hearing more specifics about what the mitigations are planned, the offsite mitigations, and where those trees are going to be, what kind they're going to be. I think that will help to really calm down the, the reasonable concerns people have about tree loss. Um, and I just have to say that a previous speaker's uh, points were so filled with misinformation that I don't even know where to begin. But I will start with the North Coast Trail is fully funded and will begin construction in the near future. That, um, that was one of many errors. Um, but please, uh, you, know, you might want to fact check some of the things that you're hearing here tonight. Thank you very much for going ahead. I hope you do approve the ultimate configuration. Thank you for your testimony this evening. Ms. Bush, we have Kim online. Good evening, Kim. Hi, uh, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, Kim Salisbury here. Uh, city, of course, I just sat down, so I have to re find my notes. Um, city resident for 45 years. I live in the city of Santa Cruz. I'm a mom, grandma, retired social worker, support public transportation, um, in the environment and transportation for all, really. Um, I'll tell a little story about my family. My son commutes daily from Monterey County. He teaches here in Santa Cruz. 
takes them at least an hour and a half each way, um, often with kids in tow, because getting dropped it off at different places. So it's not feasible for them to uh, all get on bikes at 6.37 in the morning. Last week, it took him on Wednesday five and a half hours to get home. And he went through like nearly a tank of gas. So, um, you know, if, what I see is if, if we can focus on, you know, all beings being able to move around the county. Um, I love public transportation. My alternator recently went out and actually I had to resort to an Uber, but, um, cause it, you know, again, we're not really set up like a lot of communities with, with, you know, good transportation. Or if I go down to get the kids, to bring them back to Santa Cruz, I'm not going to be able to get six bikes for us to ride all the way back on a Friday night. So um, those are some of the things that come to mind. I also am thinking a lot about South County folks that are working in our hotels, restaurants, schools, gas stations, all over the community. And I don't see them being able to, you know, all get e-bikes and, you know, make stops along the way for the kids and the grandma and whatnot. So that's, that's my pitch, and I appreciate all the hard work you're doing. Thanks so much. Thank you very much. Good evening. Hi. Um, I was just thinking that the, the staff presentation about the mitigating measures for the trees. Would you be kind enough to state your vote for the record? Uh, excuse name, me, sorry, your name Dan for Campich. the record? Yeah. Th um, thank you. Okay. Uh, and... They were saying that they're going to plant probably a two, they're trying for a two to one ratio of replacement trees, but these trees are not going to be replaced where the trees are now because there's no room with the ultimate trail. Once the ultimate trail is built, there's going to be very little room for tree replacement in that area. It's going to be built right up against the property lines on that side of the track. Um, and, and I'm opposed to certifying the EIR and approving the permit. Um, until you get the results from the latest feasibility study on the rail system impl implementation. Uh, you cannot make an informed and reasoned choice on the matter until you know if a rail system will be implemented or when it might be implemented. If you allow the ultimate trail configuration to be constructed, most of the hundreds of trees destroyed will never be replaced due to its design. As I'm saying, it's, there's no room to put in trees on that side of the track at all. Um, the trees will be gone forever, replaced by walls and pavement. Why destroy the trees in the hope or belief that a rail system might be implemented? Or if the rail system impl implementation might not occur for 20 to 25 years or more, why destroy the trees and all the benefits they provide now? Build the interim trail now and allow us to enjoy the trees as long as possible. The interim trail might just become the permanent trail. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Ms. Bush, it looks as if uh, someone from Fort is going to be calling in now, correct? Good evening. Good evening. Uh, this is Faina Siegel um, from Friends of the Rail and Trail. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> you, we uh, made a little error on the clock, so it's quite all right. Go ahead. Please proceed. Oh, great. I just uh, wanted to say a couple of things. Uh, first, how excited I am for these trail segments. Um, I am a, a one car family and we ride our bikes otherwise in these safe routes to school, to work, uh, to wherever we need to be are so important. I think we heard it from a couple of our community members and in many of the emails that you received. Um, safety for bicyclists is, is a huge factor here and human lives, I'm very sorry to say it, I, I think take precedent over uh, plant lives in this case. So thank you so much for moving forward with these trail projects. It's really gonna be transformative. I also wanted to just um, put a little note that the IPCC synthesis report came out today um, from the UN, and it's not likely that if we keep going the way we're going and we continue driving the way we're driving, that we will have our 
redwood forests with us here in a hundred years. Projects just like this one are what keep our trees in our mountains. And those are the really important ones. We can save an entire forest or we can save a hundred non-native eucalyptus trees. And I know which ones are really important to me. Thank you so much for all you're doing. Thank you very much. Good evening. I'm Pat Kittle from Santa Cruz. <clears throat> I am happy to have the efforts that have been made for uh, bicycles. And I ride a motorcycle. I feel perfectly comfortable on a motorcycle. I'm scared to ride a bicycle. I'm, I'm, that's not hyperbole. I am. Um, I just have some random thoughts, I suppose. Uh, one of them is that ukes are not native trees. And they have their own problems. I understand their um, monarch habitat. I respect that. But I think we ought to be phasing out non-native trees as much as possible, phasing them out and phasing in native trees. We don't have to just try to do it all in one swell foop. <laughs> also, um, what else? Um, well, both sides of this argument seem to be so persuasive that I support both of them. I, but in the bigger picture, um, even if we were all vegan, bicycle-riding pacifists, eight billion-plus humans is far, far too many, and we really need to come to terms with that. I'm serious about that. I hope that you folks will become serious about that. Thank you. Thank you, Pat. And uh, David is calling in. Good evening, David. Uh, good evening. Can you hear me uh, okay? Yes, sir. Okay, yeah, my name is David Van Brink. I live on the west side in Santa Cruz. Uh, so uh, let me get this straight. There's two general proposals uh, on the table, one of which scores higher on, on every metric that's using, like, numbers, not crystals or something. Uh, it's funded. It's recommended by staff. That sounds great. I mean, I, I guess we could vote on it. Um, oh, and, and by the way, the, the staff recommendation does not preclude my colleague's uh, most excellent rail bike proposal, which is uh, certainly worth looking into. That seems very interesting. So, uh, but please approve the staff recommended uh, ultimate trail. Thanks for all your diligent and professional work over the years. It's been a long journey. It's all very exciting. Um, thanks for your time. Good evening. Thank you for your testimony. Good evening. My name is Mara Kelsey. I live in Santa Cruz. And I uh, recognize the passion and the ambivalence that people have in this matter. And I felt the same myself. I, I hear the urgency to get people out of their cars and onto bikes. This is true. However, to do that, uh, creating a sterile concrete tube is what we're talking about with the rail trail. There, trees cannot be planted along the trail anywhere, you know, to compensate. There can't be vegetation. So the, there will be a loss of the use for the birds and for the uh, wildlife and the bees and <laughs> who knows what else. So I think that I don't know qu uh, answers to things like, is there a time limit on your funding that's going to make an expediency over uh, overriding considerations? I think that's really important. I have no idea on that. The uh, extensive engineering that is required uh, to build the ultimate trail is, is serious and, as you heard, is unmitigable in many ways. Uh, I think we, uh, doing this before the feasibility study by the RTC is really putting the cart before the horse. 
we don't know what's feasible on that railroad track. Certainly, I think all of us hope that some kind of transit will be there. But their own estimate is 2050. So we're going to knock down all the trees and, um, you know, build the ultimate trail. And at that point, who knows whether the ultimate trail is the right thing. The tracks probably are not reusable. So there's so much more I want to say. Nope. You did a fine job. Thank you very much. Thank you. I believe we may have someone else online. Two more online. Okay. Good evening. Um, Hi, good, good evening. evening. This is Pauline Seals, and I want to talk mostly about the trees. Um, it's obvious listening that a lot of people care about the trees, and a lot of people care about good transit. I strongly support the ultimate trail, and I uh, rec uh, recognize that a lot of work has gone into the mitigation. However, one-to-one -one tree replacement doesn't cut it in this era of climate change. Many of the speakers tonight have expressed concerns about that. Um, the analysis I did without complete information, but using technical resources, uh, came out over four to one replacement ratio. And Meg, Meg Keely, you yourself um, suggested a three to one ratio for the farmer's market last, just last week. So I would uh, really ask that you look into a much increased um, tree replacement ratio. Of course, they would not all be planted along the track. They would need to be planted in uh, Pogonep or Dolo Viego or in land trust land, but it could be done. And I can get volunteers to help look after them in the first two years. So please consider a greatly increased tree replacement ratio. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good evening. My name is Eva Leutold. I live two blocks from the railroad, Mountain View Avenue. And I urge you, I beg you, tread as lightly on this piece of earth as possible. See what comes out of the studies, of the further studies. Cut not one tree down, which is not really, really necessary. Thank you. Thank you very much. Ms. Bush, do we have one more? We have two more. Two more online. All right. We'll hear the first one. Uh, Hello, this is I'm going to guess that this is not Gene Brocklebank. This is Mr. Lewis instead, I would imagine. That's correct. Very good. You're on, sir. And it's appropriate because I'd like to bring everyone's attention back to Mayor Keeley's uh, initial remarks about the statement of under overriding consideration. We're all very aware of the impacts of this project in whatever guise it comes out as, or whatever option it's chosen. They're very well documented. They're very easy to visualize. You can go out there and see it in places where it's already happened. So we know what's going to happen with that. The statement of overriding consideration is a series of promises that are not as supported by fact. It promises to improve the vista along the corridor. This is kind of a cruel joke because there is no vista. You cannot see the ocean from the corridor segment and segment nine. You can only see the forest, what's left of the forest. So it will not improve the vista. In fact, the aesthetics of the corridor will be diminished by the project, not improved. What, what is now enjoyable about the project is the, the trees that exist there now, the wildlife that exists there now, the birds, the bats, all the other uh, animals that exist there now. Uh, as for climate change, the, the uh, overriding consideration promises that this will recruit, reduce vehicle miles traveled. There's no documentation for that. There's no evidence that the building of this project will change vehicle miles traveled in any meaningful way whatsoever. This is one project where the statement of, of overriding consideration should be 
reanalyzed. We need to go back and look at it again to see if it really does provide benefits that encompass benefits to the natural world as well as the human world. And rather than writing off the, the impacts of this project, we must make a decision for all of the world, not just part of it, not just the human part. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lewis. Good evening. I'm Michael Brownlee, and president of Santa Cruz County, uh, City. And I just wanted to clarify a little bit about this is a discussion we're having about where to put a trail. We're not really talking about the rail at this point. That is something to be determined down the, down the road a little bit. Um, so what we're discussing is where to put the trail. So the ultimate uh, plan is to put it alongside the existing rails. There was an option interim trail designated number two, which is part of the EIR, that puts the trail on top of the existing rails, not digging them up, not getting rid of them, but putting an interim trail temporarily for a decade or two or three until some decision is made about what to do with public transportation on the rail corridor. Um, yeah, I think it makes a lot of sense to allow a generation or two to enjoy the beauty of what exists now. And I think, um, I hope you all will consider that. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Ms. Bush, one more? Yeah. One here? Good. Robin Belkin, good evening. Good evening. I'm calling to support the staff recommendation for the ultimate trail. And I would like to express my concern that this issue has been voted on already and a super majority voted in support of the ultimate trail and the minority that um, lost the vote basically um, is just continuing to badger and harass and do whatever they can to undermine the ultimate plan and I think it's becoming a public nuisance. I, we need to move forward with what the people voted for. It's so unusual to even receive a supermajority vote on anything. And the fact that we have it should put this whole issue to rest. The people want the ultimate trail, ASAP. We've got the funding, the staff recommends it. Let's move forward. Thank you for all your work. Thank you, Ms. Belkin. Good evening. How are you, Mr. Scott? Thanks very much. My name is Barry Scott, and I live in Rio Del Mar. Um, and I'm, I'm, I just want to thank the council for all of your hard work and the planners, expert planners that know what they're doing. They're, they're consultants, and they've made a recommendation that I strongly support. Um, an overriding consideration that occurs to me is the very fact that I come from Rio Del Mar. Why do I care? because the rail line and the corridor is a commons. It's a county asset. It was, it's there for the good of all the communities in the county. It's not your little backyard, private, you know, nothing personal. But to those who feel strongly about it, I understand that, but it's everybody's corridor, everybody's corridor. And it's uh, vitally important, therefore, that the rail line be respected. Another comment is that the interim trail would require uh, Approval by the Surface Transportation Board, the federal government, which is unlikely because that railroad is a part of the national inventory of freight lines. And uh, as was seen during the June Measure D battle, there's no political will. There's no, the, the voters do not want to mess with that rail line. They want their trail and rail, which is what was promised to them all along. So I think, uh, I think it's important that we respect that. Uh, finally, I'm happy to come here because I feel that I'm witnessing history. Um, and it's going to be a good history. It's going to be a different outcome than the past when street lines, uh, streetcar lines were ripped up in Los Angeles and really nationwide because we thought the automobile would be the, the solution. Well, we know, we know that the automobile is not the solution. Even EVs 
are a big waste of space compared to public transit. So I'm here to witness his history, and I, I'm just so excited to be here. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Scott. One more online, is that correct, Ms. Bush? No more online. Good evening. Uh, hello, I'm Ryan Sarnataro. I live in uh, Live Oak. Across the tracks pretty frequently with our uh, middle schooler trying to get to school. Um, the ultimate trail is the industrialization of the corridor, and you'll get a good taste of that as 7B is completed. The voters really want trail and train. Well, guess what? Train and trail don't go. There's not enough room in the corridor. You folks here are going to have the responsibility to take a look at what our resource is, what the possibility is of actually getting what the voters in the fantasies uh, that they've been presented would like to have. And it's just not there. The reason we don't have a trail now that goes all 32 miles is advocates for the rail. And that is just not something that is likely. At this point here, your choice really is permanent destruction of the corridor, turning it into that industrial tube of concrete, or something that is at least usable now. It has the potential for rail in the future should that very long tail possibility come, for, come through, and serves the ecological, uh, it gives Santa Cruz what Santa Cruz really would like to have. Um, I, I don't see how this thing is framed in such a way that there's obstruction as opposed to what the ultimate benefit to the community is going to be. And I think what you folks are required to do at this point is to rise above the, the polemics here and take a look at what's really possible. Because if you look at this corridor from 100 years from now, and there's no train there, look at that show. Thank you. Thank you for your testimony. Anyone else with us this evening in chambers who wishes to make comments on this item? Seeing and hearing none, and Ms. Bush, we're finished with folks calling in. All right. Hearing is closed. Matters back before the council. I will recognize a council member for a motion. Ms. Brown. Thank you. I would like to move that the council adopt a resolution certifying the environmental impact report uh, and a resolution of finding a fact, a mitigation monitoring and reporting program and statement of overriding conditions and adopt a resolution approving the design permit, slope modification permit, slope variance and water course variance. Is there a second? I second. Second by Ms. Bruner. Under discussion, Ms. Brown, you may open. Thank you. Uh, I just want to make a few comments. Um, so I, I've been the city's representative to the Regional Transportation Commission for six years now. And I have been very fortunate to serve on that body during a time when there was a lot of possibility. Uh, we passed Measure D. Uh, that made us a self-help county. Uh, and now we, uh, thanks to that and the um, incredible work of staff at these uh, the various agencies that are working on this. So the city of Santa Cruz, I want to thank our staff here, uh, the strong collaboration that you um, uh, engage in with the Regional Transportation Commission staff and the county um, has made this possible. It's made it possible for us to bring in a significant amount of additional funding uh, in the form of competitive grants. Um, we have been so successful that um, people from the state say, wow, we can't believe that uh, Santa Cruz uh, small county is, is bringing in so much money for active transportation, for planning and building out public transportation opportunities. So I just want to say um, that uh, this has been a long haul. It's been, I've, I've felt incredibly fortunate uh, to be part of the conversation. It's also been very difficult at times, and I'm not going to... Uh, relitigate any of the debate that has occurred in our community, uh, and I'm not gonna. I'm. I'm I don't do polemics, um, and um, I 
I, I do believe, uh, you know, I am, I am far from living in a fantasy world. I have been immersed in this for six years, and I do think that it's possible for us to move forward, um, and I wanna see it happen now. Um, I do have a question that I wanna ask if I could, uh, because I too am concerned with trees, um, and I, I, I want us to save as many trees as possible. I believe that the benefits outweigh the, the cost here. So I'm gonna move forward in that vein. But I did, would like to just hear, because there are folks out in our community who are really actively engaged in this, and we've heard that, the, we've heard what the, the minimum standard is. We've heard that it's gonna be um, negotiated and kind of depend upon the particulars of where the mitigations happen offsite, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but I, I would love to see uh, Pauline Seal's uh, vision realized of a four to one replacement. And um, I, you know, I, I would just wonder if, we, if I could ask you all to explain, are there opportunities for people in the community to be involved in those conversations? When will they occur? How can, how can people engage uh, about this as we move forward? I'll start sure. by responding to that question. So, there will be additional opportunity for public engagement. Um, the uh, consolidated coastal development permit application will be pursued um, to the Coastal Commission, which affords additional opportunities for um, public comment um, and discourse and so on. Yeah, and I'll just add to that, that um, the, the EIR does include the mitigation monitoring reporting program that discusses the the initial mitigations that are required for the environmental impacts, but as a part of the uh, mitigation measures where we're actually gonna plant, where we're gonna find those locations, it is gonna be in conjunction working with our county partners, uh, as well as RTC, and trying to find those locations. So there'll be additional opportunities to engage or as we proceed in, in getting those, identifying those locations, that we can be working with the public on that as well. Thank you. Ms. Bruner. Thank you. <clears throat> um, I just wanted to, I'm glad you brought up that uh, question because I think that um, one thing we have learned in digging into this data and reading all of this information um, and following this, um, not six years for me as Council Member Brown, but over the past uh, couple years, um, I really think that um, all of the public input has been greatly appreciated. Thank you to each and every one of you. Um, and I really think that what's before us today is um, the three items in the staff recommendation and that any tree decisions should best be left to um, the appropriate time as the coastal design permit goes before coastal permission or along the way as um, those processes happen. Um, this ultimate trail that is recommended. Um, I want to uh, give a, an appreciation to staff for answering a lot of my questions as I read through all the data this weekend to um, really understand and also in response to some of my questions with all the emails that came in. Um, thank you for all the emails as well. It's always good to get um, all the perspectives um, to consider in making informed decisions. And so the, uh, it, the ultimate trail, uh, understanding that section eight and nine is one considered one project and not separable, separ not able to be separated um, because of the collaboration with county and RTC and the grant funding associated as one project. And so um, hearing from the environmental um, report as overall, I think the interim trail is very short-sighted and it really does support the long-range goals that we have for the ultimate trail to be the best option to move forward. 
Um, I look forward to um, hearing from the other council members and appreciate hearing and discussing and listening to everyone here. Thank you. Thank you, council members. Further debate or discussion? Seeing and hearing none, clerk will call the roll. Council member Newsom. Aye. Brown? Aye. Watkins? Aye. Bruner? Aye. Councilmember Kalantari Johnson is absent. Vice Mayor Golder? Aye. And Mayor Keeley? Aye. Motion passes and so ordered. Just one moment. Mr. City Attorney, uh, any other business come before? No, there is no other business. Ms. Mayor. Bush, any further business come before the council? Seeing and hearing none, a motion to adjourn would be in order. Ms. Golder moves. <laughs> Mr. Newsom seconds, non-debatable. Those in favor signify by saying aye. Opposed, aye. motion carries. We stand adjourned.